Welcome back everyone. It finally happened. For those of you who don't know, I've been trying to debate Hamza from Hamza's Den for probably over a year now. Hamza's Den is someone who frequently publishes content attacking Christianity and praising Islam. And because Hamza comes to Speaker's Corner quite a, a fair bit, it would seem only natural that I would debate Hamza publicly since we both have information on the same topics, we preach different things, and we both go to a place of debate frequently. And originally, this was kind of the plan. I had a nice calm chat with him. He agreed to have a debate. In fact, the exact words he used was, he promises he will have a debate. Would you like to debate something else? Yeah. What would you like to debate? What do you reckon? Should we not going to be filming? Oh, we're not going to be filming at all today. It's, it's raining. Right. We'll do it another time. Yeah. I'll tell you, I promise you, Chris. Okay. We'll, so uh, we'll, you do want to debate, but a, a different time. Uh, okay. First thing I don't like, especially with you DCCI and SoCo characters, when you come with this kind of preconceived idea you've probably been rehearsing in the middle all week. I ain't got time for that. Yeah? Okay, but I just offered you anything. You yeah, 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 that? that's what I'm right. saying to you. So I'll happily, I'll happily have a conversation with you. Um, yeah. Okay, what, so you will do that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation about Christianity. When are you next going to be here? Oh, Why don't we do it a bit more different, like go to a cafe or something, do it over coffee or something? Yeah, it doesn't have to be here. Yeah. That would be more interesting, actually. Okay. Change up the scene and you'll yeah, be... Yeah. The, only, the only thing I would say is, I would like a camera from my side and your camera from your side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. So I was looking forward to it. I thought this is going to be great. Hamza, actually, he specifically went further and said, yeah, we could go to a calf. Hamza would bring his cameras from the Dawa guys. I'd bring my cameras. And we'd just sit and have a nice debate. It would be useful and edifying for everyone who wants to see Muslim and Christian dialogue. I offered Hamza any debate topic because... I was confident that I would be able to come off better than he would on any topic regarding Christianity. And of course, I would take the opportunity to contrast with Islam, given that he is indeed a Muslim and he preaches Islam. Unfortunately though, huh, I got an email the very next day. So keep in mind, Hamza has publicly accepted that he will debate me at some point. He says, yes, I promise I'll debate you. I'll pick the topic. It's going to be about Paul or it's going to be the reliability of the New Testament. We will have this debate at Rina Kaf and we'll have cameras from both our sides. Very next day, privately, he sends me an email where he explains that actually he won't debate me, and the reason why he won't debate me is because he doesn't like Soko films and he doesn't like the comments section. Yes, that's right. According to Hamza's Den, the reason he doesn't debate people, it is your fault. Even in his own words, it has nothing to do with me. It is purely the fact that there are people online that leave hurtful comments that make him presumably feel a little sad and his feelings get hurt and therefore he won't, in his words, reward bad behavior. Which is weird because it has nothing to do with me. If that was even more weird is that he himself has displayed bad behavior time after time after time. In this video clip where I actually approached him again the second time where I called him out and I said, look, you publicly said you would debate me, then you privately said you wouldn't. That's two-faced. Let's have a public debate. We were both at the corner again. We have plenty of time to do this. There was a crowd that were wanting a debate, so let's do it. He resorted to name calling. He actually just called me and others names. That was his thing. He's an no. What do you call it? Chris, you've got to remember. He's an imbecile, mate. Right, but see, all, all I hear from you are insults. I, I've not made insults here. You. All you've done is you've insulted people. I've not called people pigeons, imbeciles. I've not said anything like I'm that. Facts, mate. No, you've called insults. You said imbeciles. You said pigeons. Listen, listen, listen. You said fame whores. I, I'm not saying that. I just want to have a dialogue with you. How you interpret what I say, right? right. Saying facts. Why am I no, you're saying like, insults. No, you that is the fact. He's just made a big, big moral grandstanding point about how he does not reward bad behavior, not from me, but from you. Then he proceeds to, are you ready for this? Engage in bad behavior by calling people names. Which, um, you know, you, you think you couldn't make that kind of stuff up, but apparently you actually can. And I think the reason why Hamza is so comfortable in doing this is because his audience doesn't say anything to him like, hey, Maybe you should stop doing that. Maybe let your yes be yes and your no be no instead of telling Christian apologists one thing and then doing another thing because it makes you kind of look like a big scaredy cat and it kind of makes you look like a deceiver. Not the best of deceivers, but a deceiver nonetheless. That title is already reserved. And I kind of left it at that because I don't really know where to go from that. He's just made it absolutely clear that he's happy living in hypocrisy and he just wants to continue that way. So I thought, fair enough, you know, there's only so much I can do. But then it gets interesting because not long ago, I went on God Logic's live stream, and I'll put a link down below, really good live stream, where I gave an hour long presentation where I explained that the Injil, 
that the Quran references and affirms as both being inspired, preserved, and authoritative is the Injil that we have today. It is the same Gospels that we have today. Hamza's Den then does a live stream in response to this, where he goes through my presentation and he gives reasons as to why he thinks it's not as good as I seem to think it is, right? As expected, his video response was quite terrible and didn't really add much to anything and was already somewhat addressed in my live stream anyway. But nonetheless, I did a response. And what was interesting is I thought, well, hey, Hamza is actually engaging with my material. He's engaging with my arguments. Maybe he will actually debate this because he's obviously done his own research. I've done my research. Maybe this is a topic he will discuss now. So yesterday, an amazing opportunity opened itself. I happened to see Hamza at Speaker's Corner and this was amazing. So I waited patiently. Uh, he was talking to, I think, it was an atheist or something. I'm not sure who it was, but they're having a nice conversation and there was a crowd. So I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to be respectful because I know he would want me to be. And, you know, obviously <laughs> he doesn't reward bad behavior. So I guess I got to be on my best terms, right? So I waited patiently and then it was coming to the point where I only had 15 minutes before I had to leave and catch a train. So I thought, okay, I've kind of got to just interject. You, you did live streaming covering me. You, 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 you watch my videos. You respond to my videos. You don't respond to me in person. What a coward. And Ali Dower comes along and Ali Dower starts talking to the guy. So I thought, okay, I'll interject now since Hamza's not talking. Immediately, Hamza realizes who I am and decides to shut down, just complete shutdown, doesn't respond to anything. He just keeps repeating this weird mantra of, I don't reward bad behavior, not giving any context for that. And in all honesty, I just think that's a synonym for, I am a coward, please go away. At this point, Ali Dawa decides to randomly push me. I, 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 to be honest with you, it's one of those things that I'm very, I'm not the sort of person that can be easily intimidated. So pushing me, to me, it was just, I don't know, it didn't, it didn't register, basically. <laughs> it didn't register. So he pushes me, and I think other people saw that, and it it upset them, <laughs> but it didn't really get under my skin. So I just carry on trying to get Hamza to speak with me, at least, or at least acknowledge me rather than pretending. Literally, he's just, he's just looking into space. He, <laughs> there's, like, nothing there. He's just looking dead stare, and I'm like, what are you even doing? You're not even, you're not even, like, trying to have a conversation with someone else. You're just looking into space. There's nothing there, Hamza. <laughs> I am here, you talked about my content, you wanted to critique it, here's your opportunity to do it in person, with cameras, with Muslims, who would be edified by that, presumably. But no, he passes on every single opportunity. He has, on his own live streams, behind his computer screen, behind his keyboard, in a lovely private, well-heated room, presumably, he has said, hey, you know, he has no problem with debating me on his live stream, which is weird. You can run, you can hide, but one day Chris will have you. Chris! Oh dear. Oh dear. And I'm hiding. I'm here, man. Bring Chris. Go tell Chris. Say Chris Hamza's live. And he's inviting anyone to come onto his chat. Bring it. Bring him you like. This is I'm running from Chris. So called Chris. Please. So he doesn't reward bad behavior, and that's the reason why he won't debate me in public. But he will debate me on a live stream as long as he has access to the kick and mute button. Right, Hamza. That's um, that's some double, <laughs> double looped logic there. That doesn't quite make sense. That just sounds like special pleading because you want full control over the scenario. So if anything ever goes bad, you can just end it immediately. Whereas in public, you couldn't do that. Or in a calf, you couldn't do that. Or in a speaker's corner, you couldn't do that. Anyway, I think Ali Dow was just looking for a distraction. And I think he was hoping he would intimidate me into doing something in return. But I didn't, because I barely even noticed what he had done until about three, four seconds later. And then I thought, huh, that actually happened. But to really kind of understand why we know Hamza from Hamza's Den is a coward, and I did say that to his face, because at this point my patience has run out. There's only so many times people can say yes and then no, and then imply yes, but also still no. Brag about how you would on your own live stream, but still face-to-face -face no. There's only so much of that I can I can take. So I just called him a coward to his face. He didn't really have anything to say about that. He just kept looking into the distance, hoping that someone would save him. Which, to be fair, I think that was probably Ali Dawa. <laughs> Ali Dawa came to his uh, came to his rescue because Hamza put his foot in it again. And they both walked away. I wanted everyone to see what was happening here. Muslims, your your own dais run away from debates with Christians now. Well, not even now. This has been going on for probably about a year, like very intensely from a year. Hamza ran away from Bob, 
who ran away from me. He's ran away from God Logic because, again, he promised God Logic a debate, and that hasn't happened. So that's another thing he's promised or lied about. And what was great was the Dower Doctor. Big Dave. I'm going to play this clip because I think this is just beautiful. This happened after I had left because I had to leave for a train. But David went up to Hamza and basically wanted to get answers out of this guy and say straight to his face, you are two-faced and you're a deceiver and you lie and you're a hypocrite. I agree to debate Chris. And then when I see how he behaved after acceptance of that person. What does Chris do that's wrong? Chris is actually, in my personal opinion, one of the most calm Christian evangelist in this corner. Why did but still, him? a year later, no, no, no. you have still not made good on your Why promise. Hamza, because you have done this, Why did I what assurance do I have that truly you will allow me to debate you, not today, but a time in the future? If truly you would not debate God, Logic, and Chris and me, why promise? Stop lying, Hamza. Just tell the truth. You have a track record of lying to people, Hamza. That is bad. So either, Hamza, you're going to have to admit that you don't know what you're talking about, or you're dishonest. And he did, and Hamza sat there looking like a defeated... I mean, to be honest, he looked, he, I kind of felt sad for him. He, he looked genuinely defeated. He looked like he, he had no response. He was just trying everything he could not to address David. But in the end, he still had to address David. And I think David did an amazing job in just putting Hamza in his place and saying, look, no one should really take you seriously anymore because you don't stick to your word and you don't debate anybody. The only people that Hamza debates are vulnerable people who are new to the faith or it's their first time at Speaker's Corner and they have never debated in their life. That's called predatory behavior. And you see this pretty much among all the dais now because they don't debate Christian debaters. There is no debate scene, so to speak. It's just them going to Speaker's Corner, finding people who haven't been there before, tricking them to speak about something, then getting lots of cameras in, recording it, and then editing it for their own audience because the Dabba guys need money and this is primarily how they get funded. Yeah, that's a, that's a real thing. I'm going to link all these videos below in the description box. If I don't, remind me and then I'll put them in afterwards. But this is just a short video. My schedule kind of got a little bit out of whack because I did a video before responding to Hamza that was midweek, so I didn't have time for a Sunday video. But um, after the Speaker's Corner yesterday, I just really wanted to talk about it because man that guy never met someone who's so disingenuous anyway before i go on another big rant hamza if you're watching to restore credibility it's very simple you just need to debate someone just anyone okay like <laughs> me god logic bob david paperboy we could go on a big list of people that you could debate i even offered to help uh, say you work with a debate at some point and you turn that down that's disingenuous hamza we can't take you seriously as a debater, and we don't understand why you expect to be taken seriously when you're hiding behind a computer screen and any confrontations you get in with any Christian debaters you run from. And that's and that's sad. I mean, why don't you debate David? But again, see, see, it's convenient because by blaming Soko Films, what they effectively do is they, because every Christian will be filmed by Soko Films. So by blaming Soko Films, he in effect is saying, I've got a very good excuse as to why I won't debate any single knowledgeable Christian at the park. Only people who are vulnerable, weak in their faith, perhaps they've just become a new Christian, and perhaps they've just entered the park and they've got about three minutes of debate experience, whereas Hamza has like <laughs> three years of debate experience, at least. Which to them, apparently is fair. <laughs> a Christian with three minutes of experience, a new Christian most likely, is equivalent to a Muslim supposedly, who has been doing this for three years and has been studying for that amount of time. That's roughly equal in the mind of Daiz. Oof, that is a big self-own. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I hope Hamza reforms and repents and actually does something of use to restore his credibility, but I will not hold my breath. If he still wants to debate, I'm still around. Always will be, both in person to the same place that we go to every Sunday. Anyway, if you're not a Christian yet, then, then there's a time to become a Christian. You can email me at chrisatspeakerscorner at gmail.com if you have any questions about the faith. And lastly, as always, God bless you all. Have a great day. And that includes you, Hamza. Take care.